Hi, and thank you for watching. I have to do a voiceover because the microphone wasn't working. But you requested to know, to learn how to make one of those scaling tools, and I'm delivering. Um, so here in Europe, I was only able to get this little plastic thing, um, which is no good. I'm showing it here uh, to transfer anything onto a somewhat larger canvas. So the bigger scaling tool, like the one in wood here, is used to transfer something from a smaller source to a big canvas without using a projector or a grid. You could even transfer something from big to small too if you want it. It's not a precision instrument but it works just fine and it's uh, simple to use. I will show you how to use it in a separate video. And if you have absolutely no wood making skills or tools, I also made one out of cardboard just to see if it works. Spoiler alert, it works. So I will also show you how to make one out of cardboard if that's all you can do. And then I show you how to use it from a flat, like a 2D source, a sketch or a printout, as well as how to use it from real life, which is a little more difficult. So first, let's see how to make one of those babies. You need a strip of wood and basic woodworking tools. So you don't have to have the exact same measurements as I did. I had a strip of wood that was one meter long and I first cut that in half and uh, two centimeters uh, wide and about five millimeters thick. Um, after cutting it in half, which doesn't have to be very precise yet, you tape the pieces together and from now on you always work on them simultaneously that way you get the exact same piece twice. I cut a 45 degree angle and uh, on the with any saw uh, it really doesn't matter and on the other side as well but the long end is on the other side so the points once the point is is up and once it's down. Now before drilling the holes you have to know what your bits are. I recommend what you see here, a screw that doesn't have a pointy top because you're going to sting yourself if you do. And then it's one of those um, uh, wing nuts, I think it's called in English. Um, and if you have two washers, that's good to protect the wood, but it's not absolutely mandatory. You need to have these bits so you know what size drill you are going to need. Um, because obviously otherwise your holes are going to be too big or too small. And once you have that, you just drill those holes. You uh, preferably would draw a line through the center of your wood piece um, so they are nicely and centered. Then you're done. Voila! You can now sand the edges a little bit with sandpaper if you have sandpaper. Now you are ready to put it together. When you do that, be sure to turn one piece around so that the sharp angles point towards each other. So you put a washer on the screw, put the screw through the holes, and then close it with the wing nut. And voila, you are done. It's really that simple. <laughs> How to make the cardboard one is kind of self-explanatory. Uh, use very sturdy cardboard. I used the back of uh, some very good watercolor paper. Um, and I made it a little wider, about an inch wide, two and a half centimeters wide, um, because of course it's not as hard as wood and this gives it a little more stability. So I scavenged this very good uh, cardboard from my paper. Um, this time I made a, a, a real point but to be honest, um, I actually like the one-sided point that I made on the wooden one better. Um, it doesn't matter as long as both sides are the same. Now again, before you make holes, you need to know how you're going to put it together. And for that, you have to just flex your creative muscles a little bit. First, I thought I was going to use a dowel and uh, cloth pins which I think could work if you have a paper punch thingy, uh, you know, a hole puncher, that makes exactly that size of a hole. But I didn't have that, so I moved on to another idea. So I have this thing, and um, the hole it punches just wasn't big enough. So I ended up taking a toothpick and the, used the smallest one of these hole punch options, 
the hole was a little too big, but I ended up just uh, wrapping the toothpick with painter's tape a few times until it had a good width. The rest obviously stays the same. You only need holes on one half of uh, your tool. Um, yada yada yada, you make the holes as nicely as you can and you use it as a template. Um, if you're working with cardboard, you can't go through them both at once, but you can use the first one that you make as a template for the second one. Um, I hope you can see this well enough. Now I'm wrapping the toothpick and I'm using the clothespins to fix it. It's really that simple and it worked. Now, which hole you choose depends on how much scaling you want to do from your source to your canvas. And I am going to show you how you choose that, um, how you decide that and how you actually use this tool for scaling in an extra video. So be sure to watch that if you are interested. Thank you so much for watching. You can subscribe to my channel, but you can also subscribe to my newsletter on my homepage. And of course, you can follow me on Instagram. Um, if you subscribe to my newsletter on my homepage, you will receive uh, coupons for some of my art that I sell um, soon. I will sell originals, but I'm also selling prints and I'm selling some of my art on products. And you will receive a coupon if you subscribe to my newsletter. So why don't you do that? Everything is linked and I really, really hope to see you again. So take care.